It is commonly believed that the easiest way to win hearts and minds is through the stomach. Culinary diplomacy is a type of cultural diplomacy, which can be defined as the use of food and cuisine as an instrument to create cross-cultural understanding in the hopes of improving interactions and cooperation. One of the first thoughts people get from a country is about their national dishes, and some of the closest interaction many people have with other cultures is through food. The term culinary diplomacy has been used since the end of the 20th century, popularized by scholars Paul Ruckweller and Sam Chappell Sokol. The term is often used interchangeably with the term gastro diplomacy, but some scholars tend to associate culinary diplomacy with public diplomacy and view gastro diplomacy as something more private and specific to diplomats. The concept of culinary diplomacy can be traced back to the ancient Romans, who made peace with their enemies over a good meal. In a recent study in Public Diplomacy magazine, more than half of the 140 people surveyed said that eating a country's cuisine led them to think more positively about that country. This newly escalating program looks at cultures more than policies or governments. It aims to explore the role of everyday life of countries in diplomacy, because culinary diplomacy is connected to religions, politics, society, and the identity of a country. In recent decades, thanks to the initiatives in this field, chefs' responsibilities and the importance of meeting meals are increasing. Governments are investing in their culinary programs by sending their chefs to different countries and familiarizing them with world cuisine. For example, a chef sent to France or the Mediterranean region has a chance to see that gastronomy in these areas is not just simply the food, but the power of bringing people together and fostering intercultural dialogue. Today, chefs are key players behind the diplomatic events by preparing the meals which are softening the atmosphere, easing the conversation in the meetings, and facilitating cross-national understanding via food. On the other hand, governments can use their incentives by supporting chefs or entrepreneurs to establish restaurants which offer traditional foods all around the world. We are witness to this kind of gastro diplomacy in our everyday lives. Think about the word Thai. When one says Thai, Thai restaurants near your home may be the first thought that comes to your mind, before the country Thailand. We may not know much about Thailand and its territorial features, but most of us are familiar to their sweet and sour sauces or coconut milk. Well, this is the power of culinary diplomacy. The importance of culinary diplomacy is recognized by many diplomats and has led to the establishment of official government-sponsored culinary diplomatic programs in some countries. In particular, these are Thailand, South Korea, Malaysia, Peru, and the United States. These countries have embraced the concept and actively promote their cuisines throughout the world. Within the framework of these programs, a lot of meetings, exchanges, conferences, and other culinary-related events are arranged. Some of them are included into broader programs, such as the International Visitor Leadership Program organized in Washington, D.C. Culinary diplomacy can be used not necessarily as a tool of reconciliation, but also as a means of forging closer ties with other countries, too. This is what South Korea aimed at when it introduced Korean food into Nigerian cuisine as a part of Korean Food Week in 2012. This program demonstrated the willingness of Koreans to promote cultural exchange with Nigeria. There are also some non-official initiatives in this field. For example, in order to overcome cultural barriers and hostility, the so-called Conflict Kitchen restaurant was opened in Pennsylvania. This takeout cafe serves food only from those countries with which the United States is in conflict. The White House also appointed its first official culinary ambassador in order to promote global development and ultimately world peace. Another significant initiative is the Club de Chef de Chef, an organization bringing together the head chefs of various heads of state. At last, no matter whether it is culinary diplomacy or gastro diplomacy, it is time to engage people in diplomatic relations or in everyday life via their stomachs.